Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J Judah and happy Wednesday. I just realized it's a very white background right now, but it's all right. It's all good. We'll keep moving. Anyways, happy Wednesday. Hopefully I will get this out. It's late. Let me see. It's already 540. I've procrastinated enough today. And welcome to a Reddit Am I the A-hole crochet edition episode? Grab yourself something to drink. I'm being lazy and drinking a cherry Pepsi Zero. Didn't feel like making coffee today, but we're also under a heat warning or heat advisory. So yeah, and I just, I didn't feel like making the coffee, whether I wanted it iced or not. So anyways, I hope that we find some juicy Am I the A-hole crochet edition stories. Yeah, yeah. But of course, as always, the opinions that I give are strictly my own. The stories, whether they be true or not, are just stories that I find on Reddit. I don't always agree with Reddit. Sometimes I agree with Reddit. Um, but anyways, let's get into it and get started. All right, so for story number one, as always, I will put their name at the bottom of the screen. And this one is from three years ago. It is, am I the a-hole for refusing to crochet something for my brother's future baby after years of teasing? And then it says throwaway account, so I'm not sure what that means, but apparently it's already been dubbed not the a-hole. But anyways, okay, so let's get going. I, 24 male, have never been like the other men in my family. I'm introverted, art artistic, and would rather cosplay than play sports. At age 14, my great-grandmother moved in with us and she taught me how to crochet. I loved it, but my brothers Jim, 27 male, and Tim, 27 male, used to tease me constantly for it when she wasn't around and whenever I would complain, my dad told me that life's full of people that are going to call me names and that I need to toughen up, quote unquote. I honestly think he was just disappointed that I wasn't an extroverted jock like him and his other sons. Felt like he could just pressure me into becoming more like him. Oh, I'm already, this is, I'm already agreeing so far, not the a-hole. When my great-grandmother died, she didn't have much, but she specifically left me her crochet hooks, and I was very touched. She was... She also left me, sorry, she also left my cousin an unfinished baby socks that she was crocheting for, for the, I'm, anyways, for my cousin's baby. And I could tell my cousin was disappointed. We kind of had this tradition of our great grandmother making things for the coming babies. I offered to finish that but our great-grandmother started using her hooks, and my cousin was thrilled at the gesture. After that, I kind of in inherited the position of crocheting things for any new babies in the family, and I rather enjoyed it because I felt as if I was carrying on a legacy. Although it did nothing to stop m my immediate family from making jokes and calling me names. Despite the constant attacks against my sexuality, Jim ironically came out as gay and has since apologized for his past treatment of me, so we're on good terms. But Tim is still a jerk to me. When I went to college, I went low contact with my with Tim and my father and would just tolerate them at family events. Last week, Tim announced that he and his girlfriend, Tina, 24 female, were engaged and expecting their first child over social media and everyone was thrilled. During a Zoom meeting with the family, Tina said she would love a matching blanket, little hat, and shoes for the baby from me, and I asked her to send me a copy of her registry for her baby clothes. Tim laughed and said everyone knows that it's tradition that I make the items. I told him flat out that he doesn't get to make fun of my skills as a crocheter and then expect free labor from me. My dad said that I was being rude and needed to apologize. I countered that if Tim was hurt by my refusal to crochet for him, then he should just toughen up and get over it, and then left the call. 
Since then, I've been getting text messages from my parents and Tim saying that I'm being petty and a jerk to Tina and the baby, but I haven't responded. Am I the a-hole for refusing to crochet something for my brother's baby after years of teasing? Edit. One. Okay, since I keep seeing this, I'm just gonna going to give some info. Yes, I am aware that you have that you crochet with hooks and not needles. When my great grandmother was teaching me, she referred to them as a needle. Okay. Granted, she obviously made a mistake, but when I was first learning, it just stuck. So that, so that's what I always refer to them personally, and I will correct it. Okay. Well, that's why he put the um, hooks in quotes. Edit number two. For more information, for more information. For more info, for more information, the last time my dad and Tim made fun of slash harassed me crocheting something was last year at Christmas. It's not like they stooped te stopped teasing me, calling me rude names, or questioning my manhood when I went to college. I would say definitely not the a-hole. And for someone who has treated you in such a fashion to expect you to do something that they teased you about at all, let alone for free, is beyond me. So I agree. Uh, I mean, like I said, this said not the a-hole. I definitely agree with that statement. Not the a-hole. Uh, first, first comment, not the a-hole. Note that your brother, Jim, and other relatives are not sending you messages the ones who are the same people guilty, guilty of the behavior that brought about this conflict. Uh, this isn't about Tina or the baby. It's about Tim being horrible to you about a skill of yours he now wants to reap the benefits of. It's not as if you said you wouldn't buy a baby gift either. Now that would be petty. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, they also went on to say, you went low contact with Tim, so I'm assuming you don't have very close relationship with Tina. So why is she ordering all of these items from you? Is it because Tim promised these things he couldn't deliver? Has Tim misrepresented the relationship between the two of you? Sounds like it, and Tim doesn't like that. And I know your father hated having his words thrown back at him. Applause. <laughs> Edit. Thanks for all of the awards. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so another commenter said, look it up. This says everything. I'd like to re reiterate that offering to buy a gift pl puts you way out of the range of being the a-hole. So someone else said, I'm going to agree with you. My mother-in-law, they're agreed. Well, never mind. Okay. So this comment says, I'm a knitter and I keep repeating this quote. And in parentheses, obviously applies to crochet too. Knitting is like making love. If I like you enough, it's free. Otherwise, you can't pay me enough. That's funny. I like that. F that. I only knit for people I like and, and event. Then it depends on the size of the item and the person has to be knit worthy, meaning they appreciate the craft and will care for the item appropriately your brother fits neither and <laughs> someone else commented underneath that comment said this is amazing i'm a crocheter and just know that i'm stealing this <laughs> which i like it too Knit <laughs> crocheting is like making love if you like if i like you enough it's free obviously only my husband gets it <laughs> otherwise you can't pay me enough <laughs> but that being said, I do crochet, obviously, for other people. Um, but, you know, that is just too funny. All right. So, we all dub the not the a-hole. That comment. Oh, my God. Next. Okay, so for the first one, it was three years ago. I don't know if I said that. If I did, oh, well. Uh, this one was from two years ago. It says, am I the a-hole for wanting a person to teach me crochet in person? And according to Reddit... This one has been dubbed the a-hole. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know, but that's what it says right there. I don't know if you can see. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. 
that's what the red indicates that they are the a-hole. Uh, just from the headline alone, I would say no because it would be helpful to have someone teach you in person. I had my grandma teach me in person. Uh, granted, I've retaught myself after many years of not crocheting by watching videos. So kind of have a person in person, but they just can't talk to me when I have questions. Anyway, so let's get into it. Let's see why Reddit says they are the a-haul. So a few weeks ago, I picked up a new hobby, which is crocheting. I purchased two project kits. So far, I've mastered the guide teaching me the basics. A few days ago, I started to attempt the projects, but I'm failing miserably. I don't even understand the instructions. I was telling my dad that I was having a hard time. My dad asked a coworker, and this coworker had a friend or an acquaintance, I don't remember which, who crochets toys. Tops. Sorry. She's been doing it for a year and has a TikTok. He sent me the link and, well, telling me I could reach out to her and ask for help. Perhaps she could help me over video call. I shot him down and got angry. I was angry because I've been saying I wanted someone in person, plus I don't want to make a TikTok just to talk to her. Video calling kind of also makes me uncomfortable. However, now that I'm thinking about it, if thinking about it, I'm considering it. Was I too harsh initially? Am I the a-hole? Edit. A few minutes after posting this, I apologize apologized to my dad and he forgave me. Okay, so getting angry the way this person did, I would say yes, because their, their dad offered them an awesome solution. And even though they wouldn't be physically in front of each other, doing it in a video call or through message, I mean, you still can get help. So I would say in that uh, essence, yes, the a-hole. I understand the frustration because, you know, it, it's hard to learn, and especially teaching yourself, because you don't know, don't know if you're actually doing it correctly. Although, watching other people, you kind of get the grasp. Anyways, I'm rambling. Uh, I would say yes, but I do understand the frustration. Uh, also, they apologized to their dad for reacting that way, and are reconsidering. So, I would say, not the a-hole overall because they realized their mistake in getting angry and apologized for it. So let's see. Obviously we know Reddit said they are the a-hole, so let's see what Reddit had to say. Uh, the first comment, Reddit, sound, uh, yes, the a-hole, sounds like your dad was trying to give you a hand. Maybe if you would reach out to this person, she'd be happy to have you come over and help you. You won't know that, though, because you shot your dad down. You owe him an apology and a thank you for finding some. So, and then the um, original poster commented, Yeah, you're right. I've actually already apologized to him and we've already moved on. So, I'm, I'm, bleh, I'm tongue-tied. Uh, I would say yes, but no. Does that make sense? Uh, second person, yes, the a-hole. You needed help and your dad did the best he could to try to help. Was it the perfect arrangement with a tutor at your beck and call flying over to teach you? No, but I would say having a crochet expert who is even on TikTok doing it seems like a pretty good trade. I would wager many people would choose an expert online than a less able person in person. Seems like a few people made an effort to help you and you couldn't even appreciate it. You're a hundred percent you 100% should apologize to your dad. I read your edit, which you did, but you should also be generally more appreciative. And yes, that is definitely true. I agree. Okay, so here's here's another one. It says, saw, yes, the a-hole. Reacting out of proportion happens to all of us, and that is so true. Your dad went through the trouble of asking around for your hobby. He was probably really proud to have found someone too. It's fine if you rather someone to teach you in person, but to get angry over it 
when someone offered you an alternative is unnecessarily mean. And that's exactly what I was saying. He gave a solution and you blew up in his face. And so, yeah, uh, in that moment, I definitely agree. You are the a-hole, but I'm so glad that you did apologize and it's been sorted out. So I agree with Reddit, <laughs> but with an added, not entirely. You are the a-hole, but not entirely. There we go. <laughs> All right, so that last one was a pretty quick one, so we've got time for at least one more. And this one, I have no clue what it's about in any way, shape, or form, because it, all it literally says is two things. Am I the a-hole? And I need advice. <laughs> so I have no idea what we're going into here. Uh, and, and it doesn't give one way or another. It just says discussion. That's what the blue thing is. I know you can't really see it very well, but anyways. <laughs> it says discussion underneath. So... Reddit has apparently not dubbed the, the a-hole or not the a-hole at this moment in time. This one was done or posted seven months ago. And it says, as we get into it, So, I used to crochet a lot when I was younger. I put it down for several years and decided to pick it up again. It was like riding a bike for me. Oh, man. I, apparently, I didn't really, I hadn't really learned how to do it. So, it was definitely not like riding a bike for me. Anyways, I was so excited that I hadn't lost the memory of how to do the stitches or turning chains or yarn tension and blah, blah, blah. You get it. You get it. Point is, I was so ready to jump back into it and not have to start completely over from scratch. I learned a new stitch, that pesky little bobble stitch. <laughs> yeah, those are... And there's different ones. Uh, my mom and sister were at my house the night I learned it. I did a small swatch and was excited because it was super cute. Though my hands were cramping halfway into it. LOL. Yeah, I can imagine. Because uh, bobble stitches are, they're very, um yeah, they can be hard. And they're very, uh, they eat a lot of yarn too. Anyway, my mom immediately said, Oh, that's so pretty. You should make me a blanket out of that. And then followed with, And a Christmas blanket for next year. Okay. I don't have the heart to say no to my mom to a fault. And in parentheses, not that it was really a question. And parentheses. Or my sister. And here's where she comes in. She wanted me to make her a blanket made out of granny squares. By the way, I do not like making those, lol. So I said, okay, okay. I guess I'm an idiot because I didn't want my dad to feel left out. He didn't ask for one, so I thought I'd do it in, do it in my own pattern, my own way. I've had more fun doing the blanket for my dad than I have my sisters or my mom. So I'm further along in my dad's than either of theirs. And he didn't even ask for one. Am I the a-hole for that? I had just picked crocheting back up and was immediately expected to do three blankets and stitches patterns that I don't even like doing. Technically, she should say two. I feel guilty that I'm further along on my dad's. Should I? Also, need advice on how to stay or get motivated to finish theirs. Theirs feel like more of a job than a hobby that I love doing. Disclaimer, I know that I took took on too much. None of them are on a time schedule, but I also didn't don't want to be working on these for like for five years before I finish them. Advice on how to do that and not lose my love for crocheting is greatly appreciated. Okay, so one, you took on two projects that you didn't want to do and added a third. Are you an a-hole for doing that third one faster than the other two? It's something completely new and fresh and your own design, something that you obviously love doing. So no, I'm not surprised I would be doing that one a lot faster too. Um, you're doing the projects. So I would say no, but it's your fault that you took on those projects. You could have said no or I don't anything to not have to do it, but maybe talk to your sister and say, hey, I'm not really into doing granny squares. Can we do something different? And same thing with your mom. You could have said, I'm just relearning this. I don't want to, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Learn to say no, I guess. <laughs> 
if you chose to take on those projects, they didn't, did they assume? Yeah, I do get, and I get that. Um, I understand the frustration when people assume that you'll do something for them, uh, crocheting wise, because it kind of sucks sometimes to be expected, because then it puts pressure on you, and then you don't want to do it. But think of it as a project that your mom and your sister are going to love, and be happy that you're doing it for them. And as far as advice on finishing theirs, uh, I honestly, I'm a procrastinator and I put things off and halfway through I will end up stopping and so I really don't know if I have the best advice to give, but uh, I would say go into it with a different attitude. Go into it with the same attitude that you have creating your dad's blanket and make it something that you love. Even though you don't particularly care for that specific stitch as far as the granny granny squares go they're super quick and easy to do so just create a bunch of them and then put them together um give yourself a schedule also and yeah okay that might seem like a job but if you have the right attitude with it it won't be quite so much a job i don't know does that make sense anyways let's see what reddit has to say i'm saying you're doing the project so you're not the a-hole the frustration and the not wanting to do it, I can understand and I can relate. So I would say no, but let's see. The first comment says, I love to crochet and make things for people all the time, but I established some basic rules for asking for asks from the get-go that I suggest you do too. Oh, okay. So this is giving, you know, a suggestion. One, it's done when it's done, which might be never. Okay, because they're asking you to do it instead of you just doing it. Uh, two, if you really, really want something specific, you have to buy the yarn for it. I'll send you a link. No, you you buying the yarn will not guarantee that I work on the thing immediately or exclusively. See rule number one. Okay, well, okay, for that, if they bought the yarn, I'm definitely finishing. But timeline is subjective. Uh, number three, I crochet what I want, when I want. Do not ask me when it will be finished. See rule number one. <laughs> I can see all of these are going to be, look at rule number one. Uh, number four, I do not accept money. I crochet out of love only. You cannot pay me to go faster. See rule number one. Five, if you want it, if you want it by a specific date or event, buy one in a store. I promise nothing. See rule number one. Anytime someone asks me to make them something, I am very blunt about all of the, all of the above. My family is quite used to it by now and do not give me any trouble. They know I am basically a troll hiding under a pile of yarn, yarn cakes, occasionally spitting out sweaters on nobody's schedule and that's fine. <laughs> That's funny. Um, someone commented on that and said, in quotes, I'm basically a troll hiding under a pile of yarn cakes and occasionally spinning out sweaters, nobody's schedule, and that's fine. And they said, I love this and I relate to it a lot. I do too. Uh -huh. And they also said, I also like your rules. I don't know if I'll ever need them. Nobody has asked me for anything except my toddlers, but I'm used to telling them no. <laughs> but... Your rules seem pretty understandable to anyone who crafts. And that is true. Although I will say the which might be never part, especially if the person has purchased the yarn for you, I would definitely finish it. But yeah, I, I totally understand that. Um, okay, here, this is someone else's comment. Sorry to be rude, but I think you need to grow a spine a little. Making an entire blanket for a person just because you feel kind of uncomfy Saying no is totally messed up for me. Blankets are big. A blanket is a messed up amount of work and I wouldn't even bother making a plushie for someone if I didn't feel completely confident that I that I want to do it. And they didn't even actually ask you, will they even be grateful once it's finished or will they order you to make another make other ones for their friends and their and their friends are they even paying for materials come on i mean that is true they didn't really ask it was more of a oh you should make this you know make me one for although that is an ask i would say that's an ask and the the one the sister asking for specific um granny granny squares that's an ask. Um, let's see. More people are giving suggestions. Like, um, this one said, for the granny squares, you should crochet half of them when you're out and about to give you something to do. 
That's what I did. If I didn't crochet, I would just be on Reddit instead. <laughs> I forgot to bring my crochet to work. Therefore, Reddit. <laughs> and yeah, okay, so the, yes, that is totally a good idea. Do it when you're just out and about and, you know, obviously not a whole blanket, but the granny squares. Doing the granny squares when you're out and about is something quick and easy. And if you're like waiting in line somewhere or, you know, you're at the DMV or the tag office or a doctor's office and you, you know, it's, you wait there for a while. So you might as well be doing something and granny squares are small enough that you can do a bunch of them and it won't take up a lot of space. So that's a really great idea. Uh, I would say you're not the a-hole, however, you kind of are in the sense that, I don't know how to say it, it uh, maybe it was just the way I read it. Uh, all right, all right, I'll take that back. I'll take that back. You're not the a-hole, because I understand the frustration and uh, not wanting to do something for somebody just because they asked me to do it. However, not having a conversation with your family and just feeling that frustration or whatever, or even possibly resentment for feeling like you have to do it. I mean, that that's on you because you don't actually have to do anything. Even though they are family, you don't have to do it. And having a conversation, albeit it may hurt, but probably should happen. And, but doing stuff in your spare time when, especially like a granny square, when you can build up a, a stockpile of them, uh, you may learn to actually love it. It's actually one of my favorite stitches. And I know a lot of people are, will say otherwise. But a lot of people will say, will agree as well. Granny stitches are really in that pattern or motif is really simple and kind of mindless and just busy work. Like to keep, excuse me, to keep your hands busy. So I would say, I would say no, not the a-hole. Uh, definitely open up to your mom and sister, but let them know that you're doing it because you love them, but would appreciate not having to be assumed that it would be done. I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry guys. That was just horrible. I don't know. I, no, definitely. You're not the a-hole. You're not the a-hole. I understand the frustration. All right, moving on. And finally, it is time for something cute. And today we are looking at Reasonable Guitar 768 who crocheted cute monsters. And they will be popping up right now. The one with the legs is a little, um, the, the black one with the legs is, a, yeah, I'm not sure that that's cute, but it is definitely interesting. I can't quite figure out what it is, but, you know, to each their own. The little gray looks like a little gray ghosty. That is super cute. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that little ghosty girl's really cute. Well, it could be a boy, too. And I, I, I don't know. I, I automatically assumed it's a girl. And I have no idea what the lady thing is. <laughs> but okay. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I was a little all over the place. Um, if you did, I would love it if you would hit the like button. And let me know. I am trying to learn more on editing because I would really love to give you something visually to look at instead of just me reading from my tablet, uh, let me know. Uh, if I can, would you, I could do like a slideshow of pictures while I'm uh, reading or, or is just sitting here and chilling. Okay. <laughs> if I could figure out how to edit like picture in picture or with the video, because obviously I can put pictures on top of the video, but if I could only have like part of my, you know, what you're seeing right now in a little small square section and then the rest of it be um, something else like me crocheting or something like that. Because I've seen other people do that and that I, I know that split screens are a thing. Um, I don't know. I've tried and I'm trying and I can't seem to figure it out with my software. I might have to try and find another software, but hopefully I can figure it out. Because if I can, I will add a little bit more to visually better, I guess, than just me reading the tablet. 
Anyways. Anyways. If you'd like to be notified of any and all future uploads, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click all on the notification bell. And with that, remember, gravity works, guys.